the faithful and evil servant. This is our topic this time. The end time parable of Matthew 24, verses 45 to 51. Faithful and evil servant. It is interesting that Jesus discourses the local and the global signs of his personal letter coming, and the signs of the end of the world occupies 48 verses. Whereas the length of the, his discourses on the urgency of utmost personal preparation and watchfulness for his people covered 53 verses. This indicates that the Lord had a great emphasis on personal preparation as the highest priority for his second coming. There are four parables. One, the faithful servant and the evil servant. Two, the wise and the foolish virgins. Three, the parables of the talents. Four, the judgment of the parables of the sheep and the goats. All these have intentional prophetic type of end orientation for the final preparation for those who love his appearing. Of all these parables, the highest priority of Jesus' personal concern are shepherds or ministers of his household. They are the ones who help him in this preparation. So the normal and the abnormality of life in the end, in Jesus' discussion with his disciples, the signs of the end of the world, the life in the near end time will go on as usual in the eyes of most people. After all, eating, drinking, marrying, working business are normal activities. Only the excesses of the sins before the flood and Sodom and Gomorrah are irregular but influencing the entire world today. Most people, even those in churches, no doubt, think that of the normal life just before Christ's coming. Then they are caught in suddenness and surprise that many have lived a complacent religious life of relaxation and unpreparedness. Most people did not know that they are deceived by this normal course of life cycles. But Jesus' warning to the true disciples or followers raised some level of awareness and preparation for they keep on working, waiting, watching until he comes. So Jesus first addresses the ministers of the flock. Jesus deal first with the spiritual leaders of the church. He said, who then is faithful and wise servant? Whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Matthew 24, 45. The master is the Lord of the faithful and the wise servant that he made ruler over his household. So the phrase made ruler in Greek is katistisin, meaning put in charge, appointed or made ruler, it is literally means to stand instead of the master. It is leadership which one subordinate to his superior. So the word catechism is used three times in Acts 7, verses 10, 27, 35. So the faithful servants are the shepherd of his flock, the pastors, leaders, or spiritual leaders, ministers in God's church. The term made ruler is explained in the other text. For example, the king sent and released him, that is Joseph. The ruler of people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his position to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Psalm 105, verses 20 and 22. It means to say, rulers is in charge of the domain. Okay? See, these are contrasted to faithful and evil servants. And it's Jesus who said that. Meaning to say, there are two kinds of ministers in his household, in his church. Faithful and evil. 
This is a serious matter. Here, the pure faithful, this is the interpretation of Ellen White. Look at here. The pure and the base metal is the evil are now mingled that only discerning eye of the infinite God can with certainty distinguish between them. Only God. Because in appearance, they are look alike. But the moral magnet of holiness and truth will attract together the pure metal while it repel the base and counterfeit. That the evil servant who said in his heart, My Lord, delay this coming. Professed to be waiting for Christ, he was a servant, outwardly devoted to the service of God, while at the heart he yielded to Satan. He does not, like a scoper, openly deny the truth, but reveal his life, the sentiment of his heart. The Lord's coming is delayed. Presumption renders him careless of eternal interest. Listen, my fellow ministers. He accepts the world maxim and conforms to its custom and practices. Selfishness, worldly pride, ambitions predominate, fearing that his brethren may stand higher than himself. He begins to disparage the efforts and impounds their motives, his might, his fellow servant. As he alienates himself from the people of God, he unites more and more with the ungodly. He is found eating and drinking and drunken, joining with the worldlings and partaking their spirit. Thus he is lulled into a carnal security and overcome the forgetfulness, indifference, and sloth. The very beginning of an evil was a neglect of watchfulness, secret prayer, then came a neglect of other religious duties, thus the way open for all sins that follow. Every Christian will be assailed by allurements of the world, the claimers of the carnal nature, and the direct temptation of Satan. No one is safe, no matter what our experience has been, no matter how high our station, we need to watch and pray continually, and we must be daily controlled by the Spirit of God, or we are controlled by Satan. This is the interpretation of Ellen White of the faithful and the evil servant. It means to say, Ellen White is giving us a warning who are ministers, need to be careful because Jesus wants us as in charge of his household. She said again in Review and Herald, March 14, 1878, look into our churches. There are only few real workers the majority are irresponsible men and women. They feel no burdens for soul. They manifest no hungering and thirsting of righteousness. They never lift the work of God's heart. These are the ones who have put one talent, hide that in a napkin, but bury it in the world. That is the use, the influence, they have their temporal matters. In seeking things of life, they lost future eternal life far exceeding an internal weight of glory. What can be said and done to arouse this class of church member who feel accountability to God? The mass of profess Christian commandment keepers hear the faithful words, cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness and there shall be weeping and nothing of this. Look at this reflection. We have to learn. So let me go back again. Mid-ruler means in charge responsible. If we look at the first king, chapter 1, verse 28, the man Jeroboam was mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man was industrious, made him the officer over all the labor force of the household of Joseph. The spiritual rulers, leaders, ministers, pastor of Christ's church have two highest things to do. One, to manage with faithfulness and wisdom and to give them, the household, family of God, food in due season. 
In the master's absence, the servant was to execute faithfulness and wisdom in dealing the things under his appointment. Success not required, only faithfulness shipped by the wisdom. No other agenda but God's agenda. Any deviation done, unfaithfulness, and later turned into evil. Christ object lesson 402. The smallest duty done in sincerity and self-forgetfulness is more pleasing to God rather than greatest work marred by self-seeking. There's a challenge. We need give. We need to give quality spiritual food in due season. What it means to give meat due season? This expression becomes clear in other parts of the Bible. For example, the psalmist says, This all wait for you, that you may give them food in their due season. Psalm 104, 27. In a proper time, quality, satisfying food that are served by the faithful servant, minister, ruler in the household of God. The eyes of all look expectantly to you. And you who give them food in due season, open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Psalm 145, 15, and 16. It means to say, to follow God's way of providing a spiritual balance sustenance, the pastor, minister, elders must serve the church in the way following the Lord's way. It means quality and quantity must be balanced for he was required in a full faithfulness and wisdom and not to have problem what was under him. In other words, anything short is a failure of faithfulness and lack of wisdom. Not a spiritual food for maintenance. We who are pastors, ministers, leaders of the flock, we should not feed our flock just for maintenance. It should be for a spiritual life that is genuine. The comparison brings before us one significant function of the minister of Christ. He is to supply men with a spiritual food which they need sustenance of their quality of higher life. It may be spiritual milk, 1 Peter 2, verse 2, or Hebrews 5, verse 12, 1 Corinthians 3, 2. It may be strong meat or solid food from the Word of God, not just for maintenance of salary. There is an art, as it were, of spiritual dietetics, which requires stock and discernment as well as faithfulness. The wise servant will seek to discover and render only the right kind of food, but the right season for giving it. That the family becomes strong, healthy, when the master returns, seeing the members were served their food proper times, the practical application is to be made to the service that the disciples of the Lord are expected to render the house of God. All this in the context of expectation of his return to his household. Faithful and wise servants are rewarded. Both of them. Since the faithful and wise, wise servant have followed their example of the master, the Lord received the good commendation, rewards and promotion at his return. Blessed is the servant whom the master, when he can find so doing, as surely I say to you, he will make him roller over all his goods. Matthew 24, 46, 45. There is a reward for faithful minister. Leader minister must be faithful and wise. Servant who take care of the master's business while he is still away. The servants serve the master's household, but the masters know how to take care of and reward the servants. These are God's ideal ministers. What's the role of the ministers? The priest. In the Bible, the role of the priest and minister was so secret calling. He was called to be the teacher of God's truth. He is the source of knowledge of God. 
and the law and understanding of God's word. Malachi 2.7 says, For the lips of the priest, that is minister, should keep knowledge, and people should seek the law from his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. He was powerful influencer, either for good or evil. In Jeremiah's time, prophets and priests were so corrupt, and the people followed. An astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. The priests rule by their own power. My people love to have it so. But what will you do in the end? Jeremiah 5, 31. You can find it in 8, 10, and 13, 13. And Jeremiah 18, 18, and Ezekiel 7, 26. The people love the way of life of their spiritual leader. They were under severe judgment. It's a secret to be a pastor, to be a leader in the highest position. What God says, the lips of the minister should keep knowledge and people should seek the law in his mouth. He is the messenger of the Lord. God's ideal minister according to the scripture. Jeremiah 3.15 says, I will give you a shepherd according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Are we feeding our church with knowledge and understanding that would bring us to the end and bring us to the kingdom of God? This is God's ideal ruler of his household. By faithfulness and wisdom in studying scripture, he feeds God's church in due season. The scripture should be the source of wisdom, discernment, understanding of truth. This is the role of a pastor in the church. God places much responsibility of the man called to lead and care for his people. There is much higher standard of personal conduct when called first to feed in due season, guide, lead, protect them, provide knowledge of God's holiness of life, minister's life of holiness. Leviticus 21.6 They shall be holy to their God and not profane in the name of their God for they offer offerings to the Lord by fire and bread by God. Therefore, they shall be holy. Holiness of life is the mark of a faithful minister of God's church. What are the quality characteristics of God's ideal shepherds? According to Isaiah 52, 11, Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of here. Be clean. You who bear the vessels of the Lord. There's a challenge. Apostle Peter declared, Shepherd of flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for this honest gain, but eagerly, not being Lord over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. This one, is really a quality. Not lording to the household of God. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of glory that does not fade away. First Peter 4, verses 2 and 4. So as quality leaders, we need to obey and support. Not dictator. Not the Lord over. Playing politics ministers. Obey those who roll over you and be submissive, for they watch your soul and those who give account. Let them do so in joy, with, not with grief, for that would be unprofitable to you. Hebrews 13, 7, 17. If spiritual leaders are not demanding, as Paul claims, nor we did seek glory from men, either from you or from others, we might have made demands as an apostle, but did not. 1 Thessalonians 2, 6. Let's look at the undesirable servant. Because it also served. But as Ellen White says, only the infinite eyes can see that in the end. In Matthew, it appears that there were only two servants. The faithful and the evil servant. However, comparing with other synoptics in Mark points out, there were many servants. But take notice, another servant was undesirable. The evil servant in Mark 3. 35. This is unlikely, but in reality, as we have seen in Jesus' disciple, Judas, but Jesus allowed him to serve 
that he might be transformed like his master. At the beginning, Jesus was commendable. Later, the true color emerged. So there are true disciples and false disciples, so with the rulers of God's household, both are expected as Jesus provides a vivid illustration. The faithful and wise servant and the evil servant, abusive, lording, authoritarian servant, abusing God's grace through their vested position and rank. Evil servant among the servants. In the twists and turns of events, the master seems delayed in his coming. But if the evil servant says in his heart, my master is delayed in his coming, and he begins to beat these fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, and the master of that servant will come one day when he is not looking for him at an hour that he is not aware of. Matthew 24, 48 to 50. In Mark, it was noted that the master who left his house gave authority to his servants to eat his work, commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Mark 13, 35. From this servant came first the faithful and the wise and also the evil servant. The attitude and action of this evil servant was entirely different from the faithful servant and the wise. The problem was in the heart. Thinking of the delayed, rather than being faithful and feeding the household as he was expected, he has another agenda than his master. Luke amplified the evil servant, begins to beat men servants and maid servants and to eat and drink and drunk. Luke 12.42 It was clear as Luke pointed out that the servant knew his master will did not prepare himself or to do according to his will. Luke 12.47 When rulers ministers have other personal agenda than God's agenda expect something strange happen with train of leadership affecting God's plan. Thinking that since they have authority Mark 13.35, they do what they wish to do. This is misuse, abuse of authority. Their position, ranks, office become the springboard as a clock of their personal vested interest rather than the master's interest and his plot. The personal interest make it appear as a business of God clothed under the garment of righteousness and silos for God's work. What a self-personal deception. Repeated sins from the Old Testament priests. After Babylonian captivity in Malachi's time, the priests were not doing good as God's servant. Now, you, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear and if you will not take it to the heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord, I will send a curse upon you. I will curse your blessing. Just imagine that. If you read the entire book of Malachi, that's it for the priests who were abusing authority, destroying knowledge of God and people, and many lead into destruction. God's only original plan for the priesthood the law of truth was in his mouth, and injustice was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and turned many away from iniquity. For the lips of the priest should keep knowledge, and people should seek it. Sad to say, it is not always this condition. Unless ministers daily keep close, walking with Christ, and guided by the Holy Spirit, all in their dealing. Which is better, unfaithful or evil servant? Testimonies to ministers, page 477. A strange thing has come into our churches. Men who are placed in position of responsibility, leaders, that they may wise helpers to their fellow workers, have come to suppose that they were seat as king and rulers in churches. Careful of what Jesus is saying. Positions of responsibility. They suppose that they are kings and rulers of churches. To say one brother to do this, do this another, 
And for years, there has been growing tendency for men placed in a position of responsibility to lord it over God's heritage. There's a warning to all of us ministers. We see it today. Powerful, domineering people are controlled by their whims and their caprices. They administer, rule, threat, and fear rather than love and care and concern. Testimonies to ministers 491. Sometimes a man who has place in responsibility as leader gained the idea that he is in the position of supreme authority and that all his brethren before making advance move must come to him for permission to do which they feel they should done. Such man is a dangerous position. He lost sight of a true leader among God's people. Warning for all of us who are in leadership. We need to read the spirit of prophecy so that we will be warned. Because these leaders still thinking God is with them, but in reality, they lost thread of connection to heaven by their characters. Power and authority tend to corrupt and swerve spiritual leadership. God's will and purpose are discreet and divine. Once mingled with sinful, selfish, worldly interests, expect conflict, beating fellow servants, including house of God, emotionally, psychologically, in the guise of righteous anger and indignation. This is intricate religious deception of leadership. In the context of Matthew 24, 45 to 51, Mark 13, 32, 36, and Luke 12, 35 to 48, significantly stresses servant leadership rather than leadership authority. The art and science of biblical godly spiritual leadership is practiced almost on a lip service, not in action by many. When this is done in the essence of leadership, turn into a drunkard leadership as Jesus sees it. His worldly, secular, humanistic nature and orientation of leadership rather than transformational, that is the spirit lead spiritual leadership, which leadership is badly needed to these generations of ministers of leadership. When spiritual leaders divert from the Bible, principle is spiritual leadership, entertain worldly, humanistic, secular, political, military, business concept of leadership, expect something strange and wrong direction and action. It will result in confusion in God's church. Leadership today have slanted, shifted, diverted, or mixed syncretism from inspired revelation of leadership rather than purely biblical, except for a few who remains faithful, not men, pleaser, but God. The divine manual of leadership is still relevant. Only be strong and be courageous that you may serve to do according to all which the law of Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper whenever you go. This book of the law shall not be part from your mouth, but you shall meditate day and night. You may observe to do according all that is written. For when you make your way prosperous, then you will have a good success. I have not commanded you. Be strong, be of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord, your God, is with you whenever you go. Joshua 7 verse 9. It is a high time to return to biblical leadership, servant leadership, not lordship. The drunkard is spiritual leaders. Leaders, ministers do have sometimes material intoxicating drink. But Jesus points out that is another kind of drunkenness. Both spiritual leaders and members who profess to be serving Christ's church, when spiritual leaders and members relax, complacent in working, watching, waiting Christ's coming, the enemy of soul has prepared specific species of snare and deception suited to one's test that are very difficult to perceive since they are blinded and drunk. That's why Jesus says, but take heed of yourself. Lest your hearts be 
weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the cares of this life and that they come on you unexpectedly for it will come as a snare on all of those who dwell on the face of the earth. Luke 21, 34. When worldliness enter the hearts and mix with spiritual things, result is drunkenness. No longer focus on the master's will and the purpose of their calling. Paul asserts, let us work properly as in the day, not in rivalry and drunkenness. Christian, drunk, not in licentiousness, lewdness, not strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and do not make provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Romans 13.13 13. For Paul, drunkenness is a part of the catalog of sin of the work of the flesh, according to Galatians 5.19-21. Or as Peter warns of the old life practices, for we have spent enough for our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentile, when we walk in licentiousness, lust and drunkenness, rebellious drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. First Peter 4.13 So the old nature of sin revived and noticed and owned in drunkenness. The power of worldliness and influence sometimes Christian drunk the forbidding cup of Babylon, which is doctrinal, theological beliefs, Worldviews were all in the inhabitants of the world drunk her cup. Revelation 17, 2 and 18, verse 3, through subtle deception. The problem is that never fail to consult the great source of wisdom. So long as he leader remains consecrated, the man whom God has endowed discernment and ability will not manifest an eagerness for high position. Neither will seek to rule or control. Of necessity of men must bear responsibility, but instead of striving for supremacy, he is who is a true leader will pray for understanding heart to discern between good and evil. The path of men who are placed as leader is not easy one. Never are they to fail of consulting the great source of all wisdom. Conflict on courage, page 190. So do not seek for high position. Do not seek to rule or control. Ever supremacy. Find what is the source of all wisdom and be as a faithful as Jesus said, preparing for his kingdom is coming. Acts 20. James before that, James 3, 1. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive stricter judgment. I'm a teacher. I'm a pastor. Let us not really, because we have a judgment responsibility higher than those who do not know. Therefore, take heed to yourselves, all the flock among which the Holy Spirit had made you overseers, Shepherd of the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Acts 20, verse 8. What is the counsel? This trustful of our own counsel. Let men whom God has entrusted great responsibility, leaders, elders, be perfectly sure that they are following the great leader, even Christ and are not moving under the impulse of their own natural tempers. We shall be saved only when we consecrate ourselves to God and look unto Jesus earnestly, longing to work out of his plan. Men may follow many kinds of light, but there is only one light that it will be safe for them to follow. Be sure that you are following Jesus wherever you go. Let none run ahead of Christ, but wait for the word of command. Follow me. Let our leaders be distrustful of their own counsel, of their own ambition and fancies. Let them not suppose that they spark their own kindling are the true light. Or after a while, they will find, instead of following the heavenly guiding star, they are following the uncertain leader, Satan. Testimonies to ministers, 2.11 to 12. What a counsel. 
What a warning. Relevant at all times for us, minister. Don't trust your counsel. You are not wise enough. We should not trust our own. Let's go. The source to the Bible and spirit of prophecy. Ellen White says, there are many ways where God's minister do more harm than good in the cause of God. This is particularly true when leaders have the spirit of dominion, domination, or authoritarian. While counsel of those leaders have a feeling he invested with authority to make his will the ruling power, the best and only safe course is to remove him, lest he do a great harm. You are not in the position to become authoritarian, to invest the rule of your own power. See to it that the power, let us see to it that the power is the power from Christ and His grace. Paul counsels that not with eye service as men placer, but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing the service as to the Lord, not to men. Ephesians 6. 6 and 7. Even there are leaders with an attitude of high-handed power has been developed as though has made them as gods. Ellen White has a lot to tell about leadership. Read that book on leadership of Ellen White. Because there are leaders, according to Ellen White, high-handed power that has been developed as though has made them as gods. They dictate. Everything in God's kingdom, no such thing as dictator. Everything is following by voluntary, not authoritarian. Leaders thinking as gods in their position is incredible. But it is true. We have seen it in the vineyard of the Lord. Let the people and the whale or the choice, not yours. Satan's skill in exercises in dividing plans and methods without numbers to accomplish his purpose. The simulation has become fine art with him. His work in the guise of an angel of life, organization, institution, and the skip by the power of God will work under Satan dictation to bring men under control of men. Pro guile will be a symbol of truth for the advancement of God's kingdom. Whatever in our practice is not open as they belongs to the methods of the prince of evil. His methods and practice, even among 70 Adventists who claim to have advanced the truth. Testimonies to ministers, 366. We need to listen. We need to have counsel every now and then when we are leaders. Dissimulation means feigning, hypocrisy, trying to conceal the right character and agenda for a person's advantages. Serving God is always voluntary, not forcing the will of people. This principle should be lived and practiced by all, especially ministers, leaders in God's flock. Otherwise, regret in the day of judgment for the injury and injustice done to the members. Shepherds of the flock feed themselves, but the flock is hungry. Ezekiel 34, verses 2 to 6. The says the Lord God to the shepherd. Woe to the shepherd of Israel who feed themselves. They are only feeding themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flocks? You eat the fat and clothe yourself with wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor you have healed those who are sick, nor bound up with the broken, or brought back those who are driven away, nor sought that was lost. But with force and cruelty, you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And they become food for all the beasts of the field. And when they were scattered, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth. And no one was seeking for searching them. This is the evil servant in God's household. This is exactly the evil servant. That Jesus says in Matthew 24, 48, and Luke, maintenance food. The saddest truth is a plain. 
It is clear in the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Nor he is thus he love his brother. 1 John 3.10 The field of the world, the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked. Matthew 13.38 Live a righteous life, sanctified life. This is the mark of a mystery carrying the order of the martyr, master, marching in his command. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transform, transforming into apostle of Christ. No wonder Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. Therefore, there is no great thing if his minister transformed himself into the minister of righteousness whose end would be according to their works. Paul was not talking outsider. He's talking about the church. This is in the circle of the church, not outsiders. God against careless worldly shepherd. Therefore, you shepherd, hear the word of the Lord as I live, says the Lord God. Surely because my flock become a prey, my flock become food of every beast in the field, because there was no shepherd, did my shepherd search my flock, but the shepherd himself feed himself and did not. So, behold, I am against the shepherd. I will require my flock at their hand. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherd shall feed themselves no more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouths, and they may no longer be food for them. Do we have such shepherd today? The flock can evaluate their own shepherds. What they are feeding, for maintenance or for life eternal? There are even smoke screen in God's work. Some who have labored in ministry have failed Attaining success because they have not given their undivided interest to the Lord's work. Ministers should have no engrossing interest aside from the great work leading to the soul, to the Savior. Ministers cannot do acceptable work for God. At the same time, carry a burden of large personal business enterprises. Such division of interest dims the spiritual perception. The mind and the heart are occupied with earthly things. The service of Christ takes a second place. They seek to shape their work for God by their circumstances instead of shaping circumstances to meet the demands of God. Acts of the Apostles 365. Taking advantage of the privilege, but not really serving God, but self. This is personal deceptions. Minister, let us, let us play. Let us not play God. How can we handle two masters? When leaders and flocks become friends of the world, they turn as an enemy of God. Do you not know friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore wants to be friend of the world, make himself an enemy of God. James 4 verse 4. Is spiritual leaders who are worldly are enemies of God. So ministers should take good care that they are not worldly because that worldliness contaminates the household of God. Why? They are Satan's number one target to lose the influence and credibility. The Stimulus Volume 5, 426. The more sensible the position they occupy, the more fierce will be Satan's attack. The more responsible the position, the more essential the influence be right. Every man whom God has chosen to do a special becomes the target of Satan. Stimulus Volume 5, 428. This is especially to the complacent workers. We need to listen. Let us read. Let us continue to be humble rather than thinking of our rank, position, and authority, and power. Jesus here clearly connected the readiness for his return, a life of love, spiritual focus, self-control, manifested by faithful servant. Well, the ever servant has excessively given to the pleasure of the world, that is to eat and drink. He was intoxicated, drunken by worldliness. He is yielding to the evil of his own disposition. Shall take occasion from his Lord long absence to behave unfaithfully in his duty, began to abuse, 
behave tyrannically toward his fellow servants and give himself up to gluttony and drunkenness, wasting their provision in living riotless with his companions. In the confidence that the Lord's return will not be speedy, he throws off the role of servant and play as the master. But evil maltreating those faithful servants who refuse to join him, seizing them and revealing fullness of his master's board, intending that when he's got his field to resume the mass of fidelity before the masters appear. So the quality of work of faithful servant, the servant is there called steward, minister of the word, who are steward of the mysteries of Christ, the manifold grace of God. Minister preach pure gospel of Christ, the whole of it, conceal no part, nor keep anything of it, seek not to please men, but God. Neither seek to their own things, their ace, honor, profit, but for the glory of God. The honor of Christ and abide by the truth, cause and interest of the Redeemer. They are wise, will instructed in divine things. Who make Christ the main subject of their ministry. Who improve their talents and time for their master's use. And the advantage of those who are under their care. Who seek for and deliver acceptable words and matter. And manage the whole trust as to be able to give them good account of their stewardship. The faithful servant. The servant of the Lord. Those in the position have no other agenda. The post of such person is in Putin. The work he is to do, follow whom his Lord had made ruler of his household, the family, the church of God, which is the household of God or the house of faith, in which believers are various growths and sizes, some fathers, some young men, some children. Over this, the ministers are by their Lord made place as ruler, not as Lord and tyrants over God's heritage to govern them in arbitrary way, but over them in the Lord to rule according to the word of God. And the laws of his house, by preaching the gospel, administering ordinances, keeping up his worship and discipline of the church. Acts of the Apostle 3, 66. The minister's work is to bring the attention of the indifferent and disloyal to the realities of the enemies. Eternity. Not to beat not to punish them by bringing drastic oppressive action because of their ranks and position of leadership. Stay away in God's, stay always in God's business. Minister, principal business is to give meat in due season, even portion of it, as in Luke 12, 42. The word of God is to be cut, rightly divided, everyone in the family, according to his age, appetite and digestion. It is to have proper part and portion given him. It must be meat, proper food, such as is solid, substantial, nourishing, even wholesome words of Jesus Christ. That must be given them, not the has and the empty trust. An ill due season, its proper time, in their cases, circumstances require, call for, as whether weary, uncomfortable, or in the dark, or under temptation and inflection. For a word fitly and seasonally spoken, how useful it is. Stay in God's business. Do not by any means attach to the enemy's business. The business of making spiritual people, not worldly. Paul admonishes minister. No one engages in a warfare and entangle himself in the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him. 2 Timothy 2.4 It is unreserved consecration to the master's service. The minister of religion ought to be peculiarly faithful in discharge of our duty. For it is not an ordinary trust that is committed to our charge. We are stewards whose business is to take care of the whole family and who because of the influence of our example may have upon others ought to be remarkably diligent. Our duty is to be well acquainted with the stores of biblical truths and to understand how they may best apply. The main business of minister to make members spiritual and mature Christian, 
turning every feet of men and women into the path of righteousness as the highest sacred calling rather than in the path of the enemy of righteousness and holiness. Watching Saul, not watching world's good. Acts of the Apostles, 366. The minister who is wholly consecrated to God refuses to engage in business that would render him giving him fully to the sacred calling. He is not striving for earthly honor or riches. His one purpose is to tell others the Savior who give himself to bring human beings the riches of eternal life. His highest desire is not to lay up treasure in the world, but to bring attention to the indifferent disloyal to realities of eternity. It is not God's will that his minister should seek to be rich. But look at today, competing houses, cars, and everything. We have to rethink. Only few ministers have this principle. He cannot serve to his fullness of God if he cares the riches at the same time cares God's people. Worldly goods is powerful means to distract his service to God. For Christ's ministers are spiritual guardians of people entrusted to his care. 360, Acts of the Apostle. He is the watchman. If he failed, the blood is required of him in the day of judgment. Ezekiel 33, 9. Consecrated to the ministry. The minister who is a co-worker with Christ will have a deep sense of sacredness of his work. The toil and sacrifices required to perform successfully. He does not study his own ease and convenience. He is forgetful of self. He searches for the lordship. He does not realize that he himself is weary, cold, hungry, but he has one object in view, saving the lost. Acts of the Apostles 362. The solemn words seem to be neglected today. Pastors and members compete the race to gain things of this world, and eternal things eclipse from their minds. The blinding power of the world goods is incredible. As a result, we have just a maintenance work and service for God. We need consecrated men and women to finish God's work on earth. We have no much time for this world unless in the last God and his kingdom. We need to prepare people separate from the world. The works of the minister are to bring people into the life of holiness rather than worldliness. This is what James is saying. Do not make friend with the world because you make himself an enemy of God. Teach them to love God supremely. Do not love the world or the things of this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not the Father. But, but that is where we are. We need to be aware, sensitive. And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who loves, who does not Thus the will of God abides forever. By doing this, they become faithful and wise servants, ready for masters appearing. We need to pray for our ministers to be faithful and wise since members follow their influence. Ministers of Jesus must teach both in the church to individual the fact of profession by faith, even 70 Adventists, unless it proceeds from the heart, faith, piety, is powerless for good. Religious light is to shine forth from the church, especially from minister, in clear, steady rays. It is not flame up special occasion. Then grow dim, flicker, is about to go out. The excellence of Jesus will ever shine in the character of true believers. They will be adorned the doctrine of our Savior. Thus, excellency of the power of the gospel are received. Each member of the church is required to be a living connection with the source of light and to be a spiritual worker doing the part by good works to reflect the world. Especially should minister, keep himself from every worldly entanglement and bind himself to the source of all power that he may present correctly what it means to be Christian. 
He should cut loss everything that would in a way divert his mind from God and a great work in his time. Christ expect him as his employed servant to be like himself in mind, in thought, in word, in action. Testimonies, volume 5, 531. Ministers should study the snare and deception of Satan. The Bible provided truths of the wiles, the snares, deception of Satan. The truth is that Satan is ever studying how to win people in his side. And so we need to understand and debate peace prophecy has material resources so that we will not be deceived. If Satan is studying us individually, how many of us are studying his method in destroying us? All his temptation, deception, are marked in the spirit of prophecy. Yet so many of us are ignorant. We have a greater light, but we have failed to walk and study that light. The book of Revelation, for seven times, refers Satan's use his deception in the end time. Perfect deception in the final crisis. If you do not have book, again, I won. So that will follow. Satan's deception is perfect, like a first human. So look at this book. Read the Greek controversy, a lot of chapters, ministers and members, the snares of Satan, everything, the enmity between man and Satan. When we do this, ministers will become faithful in the flock. Faithful and wise servant is utmost needed today in the household of God. Our prayer should be, Lord, give us the faithful and wise servant to this end. I want to end this presentation. Of all, after Jesus' presentation of the signs of his coming, he was telling that in the end time, two kinds of ministers. That's a warning. Faithful servant an able servant. Only eternity will tell who are the faithful, who are the able. But we need to see to it by reading the Bible, by reading the spirit of prophecy. Let's look and evaluate our personal leadership in our local church, in our family, and see to it that by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit who changes us, we follow the master's will, faithful to his church that he left and that would bring victory in the end of time because faithful ministers in God's household will be rewarded when Jesus come because we are part who have done the greatest preparation for the coming of Jesus Christ. This is my prayer.